Hello, this is Tov from Trifold Production with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this Quick Tip, I'm going to introduce you all to an add-on that's free for all to use, and it's called the Camera Magna Hair. That's kind of a mouthful. Uh, but it creates like, uh, I guess you can call it anime style hair like in Dragon Ball Z or uh, Pokemon or uh, Beyblade. I think that's, they have characters in that, they're like with the spiky thick hair. And with this add-on, it's just does it pretty easily. Um, it's only for Blender 3.0 and above. It won't work for 2.9 and any other version of Blender, just for 3.0 series, I think. And once again, I'll leave a link of it uh, in the description below so you can download it and try it out for yourselves. But it's the same process. Once you've downloaded it onto your system, you go to Edit and Preferences. And then you go to install, and then at the get to where you've installed it on your system, click on install add-on. I've done that already. So I don't need to do that again. Let me type in Kama. I think that's how I pronounce it. Or Kami. Something like Kami Magna hair. And I'll probably check in the box and it's activated. Now we're going to use Suzanne uh, for this demonstration. And obviously to get rid of the cube, just press uh, delete on your keyboard and that gets rid of the cube. And we're going to press Shift A on our keyboard, go to Mesh, Monkey, press 1 to go into the front orthographic view. And from here, we're going to make Susanna a lot more presentable, a lot clearer, a lot smoother. So click on our modifiers, left click on Add Modifier. And we're going to go to Subdivision Surface, crank it up to two levels in the preview port here. Click on this drop down arrow, arrow, sorry about that, and click apply, and that applies that modifier. And once you've activated the Kami uh, Magna here, you'll see it's in the tool panel off to the right. And once your character is highlighted in orange, if it's not highlighted, let's say it's not highlighted at all. Uh, well, this is different. Well, I guess it, if, if it's not highlighted, just left click on it and it turns it to. Uh, chosen option. You can tell by the fact that there's an orange outline around your model. And then click on start drawing. Now if this pops up, don't worry about it. It doesn't mean anything. I don't know if it's a bug or what that is, but as you can tell, the add-on still works. You, your cursor or your arrow turns into a, a pen or a pencil. And you have all these options here. <clears throat> now, uh, the tapper start is like the root of the hair tapper in is the end of your hair and because this uses uh, bezier curves you have different options <coughs> excuse me when it comes to the type of curves you want to utilize I'll leave it on round because that's fine enough let me get something to drink here there's something in my throat <coughs> now the depth is what causes the thickness of the curves to appear uh, on the model. <coughs> oh, it's just the weather. Uh, resol resolution bevel that uh, determines how many vertices are applied to the hair strands or hair mesh. But remember, the more vertices are applied to the hair mesh, the longer it could take to render. So I would just leave it at four. The offset uh, determines how close how far away from your models or your model's head the hair strands or hair mesh is. Now these options will utilize these as we apply the uh, the hair mesh to our model and to start drawing just left click and drag. And one thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to kind of be kind of um, pretty cautious when it comes to drawing the hair strands or hair mesh because if you draw them too long Sometimes they end up getting twisted up in uh, in itself, and it doesn't look good. So we're going to start off by drawing one uh, hair mesh first. Left click and drag on your model. I'm going to go with that length. And obviously you can't see how thick uh, the curve is because it's just a curve. But we're going to increase the uh, the depth of it by cranking this up a little bit. Left click and drag on that parameter there. Let's put it on 0.05. And one thing you have to keep in mind is every time you draw a hair mesh onto your model, you have to click smooth and straighten strands. 
because if you draw a lot of them at once and you try to click smooth and straight and strand, it's not going to affect all the other ones. It's just going to affect the latest one that you applied. So as you apply your hair mesh to your model, smooth it out, <coughs> excuse me, and straighten it out also. And you can increase the uh, number of uh, points in the Bezier curve. That'll give it more of a smoother look, I guess. So we're going to crank this up to like maybe seven. Let's draw another strand again. And then smooth and straighten strands. And this is helpful because usually when you draw a Bezier curve uh, in Blender, you have the option of manipulating the points here, the handles here, but with this add-on, that kind of eliminates that by giving you the option to make it smooth and to straighten it out. So that way you don't have to mess with the uh, the curve at all itself. Now we're going to make this next curve a little bit longer so you can see what I mean when it comes to the uh, curve getting tangled up in itself. So I'm going to click, left click and drag here a little bit longer. And you can see at the bottom here it just went into itself because it's too long. Now sometimes uh, applying the smooth and the straighten options does fix that. Sometimes it doesn't, but let's see if it'll fix it this time. Smooth. And it really didn't. But before you go further, you just press Control Z and that eliminates that. So the best thing to do is that when you draw the strands, just keep them pretty much uh, not too long. Let's left click and drag here. And it still does do it in terms of it just intersecting it to itself. But this is where the smooth comes in and straighten comes in and that makes it smooth and straight. And you can just keep going with this pattern here. Smooth and straight. And you don't have to draw just lines on your model. You can draw a circle or a, a swirl. So let's try that. Let's left click and drag a swirl. And that looks good. Smooth and straight in the strand. And you can just do like uh, a numerous number of hairstyles with this add-on. And it does a really good job once you understand how it works and the principle behind it. And you just keep it, uh, the strands to a minimum, it turns out pretty fine. Left click and drag here. I'm just going to intersect it into itself. Smooth and straighten strands. Let's draw a few more. Let's say two more. Smooth, straighten one more smooth and straighten and then you've got that and you can fill up the whole scalp of your model with uh, this cami hair system and once you have it the way you want like I say you have to have the strands this thick and make them a little bit thinner by messing with that parameter there make it a little bit thinner and add more hairs to it but once you've you're comfortable with the way it looks and you feel that this is what you're wanting, the next thing to do is to convert it, the mesh, or to convert the Bezier curves into a mesh by clicking on this option here, left click, and that applies that. And now, in order for you to apply a texture to it, because this has no textures applied to it at all, it doesn't come with textures, and you can see that by clicking on the materials tab, left click on that, and there's no texture there, just click on new. And we're going to change our view from solid to material by clicking on that option. And it's all white because there's no textures applied to it. So let's uh, hover our cursor in this corner here. Once it turns into crosshairs, left click and drag down to divide the window. Uh, left click on that option or that icon and go to shader editor, left click on that. And you can see that it has a node setup system that we've uh, activated. But we need more nodes to this. And to get the nodes that we need, just press Control T. And then press G to grab uh, this up. This is something that's kind of strange with Blender 3.0 and above. And the node system, it tends to just kind of scroll automatically, which I don't really like that. So you see what I mean? Just kind of just does it on its own. Uh, I guess there's an option to turn that off, but uh, we're just going to position that right there. Now, if you press Control T and nothing happens, uh, that means that that your Node Wrangler uh, add-on isn't activated. That comes with Blender in general. So go to Edit, Preferences, and type in Node N O D E, and put a check in that box, and that activates the Node Wrangler. And after you've done that, press Control T again, and this should come up. 
and we're going to change it from uh, UV to generate it. Left click and drag on that node. And we're going to click on open because we're going to apply texture to uh, that hair mesh. And what I've seen is uh, whenever I apply a texture to a hair mesh, I always use a wood texture because it has a lot of different colors applied to it. Or a lot of colors, colors inside of the uh, wood texture. And we're gonna, I'm going to click on Blender Textures where I've saved all my textures. And here's one here. Here's a wood texture. Let's click on that. Open image. And there you go. It applies that to it. Now you can choose a different wood texture if you want to set up your own hair texture, but this is what I just use. I would have chosen a different one, but this just to give you an idea of you know how to apply a wood texture to a hair mesh to make it look like hair. And if this doesn't look right to in terms of the way the texture textures are laid out, you can adjust that by going to this node system here and changing it from uh, the layout format from flat. You left click on that, you have a drop down menu. You have flat box sphere and tube you can choose any one of these and see which one looks best to you I'm going to click on box see how that looks and that looks a little bit better so that looks good but one thing I'll always test when it comes to uh, add-ons that only apply to 3.0 and above uh, blender versions is I want to see if I can export this as a wavefront object uh, and use it in a different version of Blender that's lower like 2.79 and below or use it in 3ds Max or in Maya so with this highlighted this hair mesh highlighted in orange I'm going to go to file then export then wavefront object and I'm going to save it on my desktop for easy access and I'm going to call this hair mesh hair mesh I want to make sure that I check this box that says selection only. Left click on that. And export OBJ. And that was pretty fast because it's not a lot. Uh, it's not a big mesh. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Blender 2.79, which I use sometimes. Left click on that. And have that open up. I'm going to turn this to cycles. I'm going to delete my cube here. I'm going to go to file imports uh, wavefront object go to my desktop hair mesh and see if this imports it as an OBJ and it does so yeah that's uh, that's a good thing that's a plus for the add-on to be able to use it the results of it in a different uh, version of blender and also different three other different uh, 3ds or 3d based um, software but yeah that's today's blender quick tip and I hope this was helpful for those of you who are watching. And thank you guys who have subscribed in the past. Those of you who are subscribing now. And those of you who will subscribe in the future. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next one. Alright, adios.